What's up, everybody? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Leroy Garrett. I am a former cast member on MTV's The Challenge. And there's something that's been weighing on my mind for a long time on my conscience uh, about my time spent on The Challenge for my 12 seasons. And I just want to have a moment of truth. And um, I want to basically explain to you guys, you know, why I retired from, from MTV and why I stopped doing The Challenge. I get a lot of questions uh, day to day, whether it's in my barber studio, or whether it's on Instagram, or whether it's on Twitter, of why I decided to leave. You know, prematurely. You know, a lot of people said, "Man, you got a lot left in you," and you know, are you are you retiring because you know you're tired of losing, or whatever the case may be? And actually, that's actually far from it. Uh, there was something that happened to me while filming um, several years ago that has been weighing heavy on my conscience for a long time. And I just never forgiven myself for it. And I've always wanted to speak about it, but I was always afraid to. And now that, you know, I've decided to step away from the show, uh, I felt as if this would be a good time to actually talk about what happened. Um, for years, um, I've been beating myself up with guilt over how I reacted and things I could have done differently. And Finally now, I've mustered up the strength to talk about it and finally be able to forgive myself. So let's just get right into it. Um, for those of you who are, you know, avid challenge watchers, um, I know you guys remember the season Dirty 30 uh, that we filmed in Columbia. I think this was maybe five or six years ago. And there was an episode on Dirty 30, uh, episode nine to be exact, and the name of it was called Rampage. That was the name of the, the actual episode. And it basically was called Rampage because there was an instance where uh, another cast member, another former cast member, her name is Camilla, where she made racist comments towards me and was violent towards me. And MTV didn't do anything about it to uh, help me or protect me at that point in time. And for the longest, I wanted to quit the show for the longest I wanted just to retire, for the longest I wanted to speak up and say something. But in all honesty, a lot of me was afraid. A lot, a part of me uh, stayed with the franchise because of, because of money. Uh, and I was just lost. I was just, and, and, and as, I, as I watched back uh, that actual episode, and I think back to that time, this Leroy right now wouldn't have put up with that. But that Leroy then did, and I needed to get this off my chest because I want to tell Leroy back then that I forgive you for uh, for the way that you handled it, you know, uh, because I felt like I was alone and I had nobody, so I just did what I had to do to survive, and I was thinking about, you know, making money more than I was thinking about my integrity or standing up for uh, black people because we've been going through a lot since then up until now. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna actually watch the episode right here on my laptop. And I'm basically gonna narrate everything that happened to basically explain to you um, how everything went down. So just uh, bear with me. And as I put this together, you guys can actually go back because the episode is on YouTube and it's on uh, Paramount Plus where you can watch the episode. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So without further ado, here we go. So at the beginning of this episode, I'm in the room and I'm speaking about who's going to take what girl on the elimination. I say her. And the camera pans over to Camilla, who she's standing inside. Uh, she's standing in the doorway of the sliding door. She's looking. So she's basically kind of eavesdropping. You can see in her face that she's pretty intoxicated. And she's screaming out, like, who, who are you talking about? And I'm kind of confused because I'm wondering, like, what is she talking about and why is she in my room right now? So... She comes in and says, like, hey, who you're talking about? And I'm basically telling her, like, hey, Camilla, you need to just kind of relax. And, you know, I wasn't talking to you. And just kind of leave. At this point, I can tell that Camilla is, is probably going to go off. But I'm trying to do everything I can to kind of diffuse the situation. So at one point in the video, I tell Camilla that she's drunk because obviously she's drunk. And at this point... I'm thinking to myself, like, man, I need some help right now. So I asked Bananas, I said, can you tell me what she's talking about? And as I'm watching this, and I'm watching myself, I could tell that I was looking for, like, some type of backup. But nobody really knew what to do or say. And I just knew, like, man, this, is, this isn't this is going to end well. So Camilla's, 
cursing me out. She's telling me that I'm an idiot. I'm explaining to her that I feel bad for her because I do. I've watched Camilla for seasons go off on people, be drunk, go on rants. And I'm thinking like, damn, man, I really truly do feel bad for this girl because she really has a problem. And it wasn't to like antagonize her to make her mad. I wanted to let her know how I felt. Like at that point, I'm telling her how I feel. I really feel bad for you. Wow. And at this point, she's talking about how many wins I have. You know, you never won before, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, whatever. And then she's like, you know what? You're a black Wow. In my mind, I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. Someone that I work with is talking to me like this on camera? Even though you're drunk, like, why, why, do, why does my the color of my skin come out of your mouth? Like, why is that what you see when you talk to me, right? Whenever I see people and I argue with them, if I'm arguing with someone from another race, the last thing I'm gonna call out is the color of their skin. So right there, I knew that this wasn't gonna be good at all. In the video, I tell Camilla that she's gonna be in tears for the way she spoke to me because I just knew it. It's, it always happens, you know, people say certain things, they're so hyped about it, they're, they're in their feeling so much, F you, you black mother effort, this has happened to me so many times. And then the next day, or they're in tears about what happened. This isn't the first time that someone has said something about the color of my skin. I've, I've had one of my closest friends, um, girlfriend call me in my face, like just really go off on me. And then you know, the tears come the next day. And I hate that. I hate when that happens. The tears come and you're sorry. You're not sorry. Sober, you're not sorry. Drunken thoughts and verbiage are, is a sober heart. I'm sorry. And as Camilla is singling me out for being black and the color of my skin, it's not as if I don't already feel singled out because of the fact that I'm in a room filled with white cast members, that they're all just staring at me in the middle of this room and no one is saying anything. I feel embarrassed. I'm shocked. I'm upset and I'm thinking to myself, like can someone that's in a position of power please come in and help me? Like I'm literally being attacked right now in front of everybody who I work with and no one is doing anything to help and not even necessarily the cast members because they're just as in shock too, but producers, or security at this point. Like once those words came out of her mouth about the color of my skin and you could tell that she was uh, coming out of a place of hate, that someone should have stepped in. That's, that's so unacceptable. And the fact that no one didn't, I feel like MTV, you dropped the ball. So the next part of this video is where I see Johnny Bananas, who's a dear friend of mine, who I love to death. Uh, as Camilla's about to exit the room after her, racist rant, he throws a pillow at her. I was just so uh, angry that she would talk to me that way. Camilla's someone who's actually stayed at my house before in Las Vegas. You know, there was a time she was passing through coming from Nebraska and uh, she stayed at my house as, as like a lot of cash members do when they come to the city. And so to notice somebody who I've let stay at my house and spend some time with would talk to me that way, I just was like, it, it was just, it was unreal. So to see Johnny do that, and hit her with that pillow. Part of me was definitely happy, but I knew that, you know, now it's probably gonna turn it up even more. So, as I watched the video also, when Camilla gets hit with the pillow, she turns around and she's asking who hit her with the pillow. She immediately picks the pillow up and she violently throws the pillow at me. Violently hits me with the pillow. Excuse me. That right there is enough that right there should be enough for her to get sent home. As if like what she said to me wasn't bad enough. Now you have assaulted me. So let's continue to keep watching. And as I watch myself as security's exiting her out, there's me doing my interview and I'm saying that I'm arguing with the person who has the power to throw me in. Leroy, why are you thinking about the game right now? Like why do you care that she has the power to throw you in? You should be saying, this girl needs to get out of here. She needs to get sent home. But I'm so terrified to really speak how I want to that 
I gotta basically kind of like tiptoe around it. And I feel like it shows, it, it, re it really shows that I was lost back then. Like I literally was thinking about money more than I was thinking about uh, what's right and, and morals and, and everything that black people has been through. And as I watch this, um, I'm disappointed in myself, but a lot of me, I think that I probably didn't know any better. And as I watch this, I like to say, Leroy, I forgive you. I forgive you for not standing up for uh, yourself and, and really taking a stand on, on what's right. I forgive you, my brother. I know you were going through a lot back then and, and you didn't know where to go, but this Leroy today, I forgive you. Now at this point, as I'm watching the video, Camilla has exited the room. She's down by the stairs. She said it's all about black, like Leroy, or whatever the case she said, you guys have seen the video. And this is all coming from, from hatred. You don't just say things like that. Like that is, is like deep rooted. And I didn't even see that until I watched it on tape when the, when the show came out. And I was just mind blown. Like this girl really, um, it's really out of control. Now she's now she's downstairs, she's picking up weights, and she's cursing, and she's coming up towards me. She wants to come up the stairs, she's cursing. So at that point you could tell that she's being very violent. Who knows what she was gonna do with those weights? You could tell that she's out of control, but they're just kind of like letting it happen. Like security stepping in, but it's just like she should have already been exited out, whether she had shoes on or not. Like, where is the protection, right? Where is the protection? First of all, she should have already been escorted out of there once she started talking about the color of my skin. Once she hit me with the pillow, like people are moving slow. Like I don't, I don't really understand uh, what's going on or why this is happening. But you know, this is the world that we live in, people. This is the stuff that blacks have to deal with every day, and. While I'm filming this, I'm just thinking to myself, you know what, Lee, it's all good. You handled it the right way. Because if I was to start yelling at her or cursing at her or anything of that nature, the six foot one, 200 pound black man, now I'm gonna be the angry black man. That's what we always get when, whenever we express our feelings. You know, they say we're aggressive. Well, I handled myself uh, extremely well right there. I was very, um, calm um, I didn't say anything to, to to provoke or or have her try to come at me even more and I just know that if I were to start cursing at her everything would have got flipped and and that's not fair why do blacks always have to you know take the high road or turn the other cheek you know why couldn't I sit up there and say hey you're gonna be going home tonight but I felt as if I didn't have to I felt like you know what Lee you did what you had to do and the network they're gonna see this and they're gonna say, they're not standing for this. Cause you know why? Every time I get a call from MTV, they're always like, oh my God, Leroy, we love you. And we can't wait for you to, to come back and film. You're such a you're such a joy to work with. So I'm thinking like, yeah, she's out of there. I'm not worried about anything, but let's see what happens. Cast members are in their interviews and they're supporting me saying that they think that Camilla's rude and she's a nasty person. And you can just see it. I mean, this has been this girl for the past eight, nine years of her doing this. So she goes upstairs, she starts breaking and destroying stuff, which is also showing very violent behavior, um, cursing out security, and it's just belligerent. And that's one thing that I hate, and as I was telling Car Maria, um, I was saying I'm not gonna talk to her, and I didn't talk to her for the rest of the season, you guys, but you can't get drunk and then say you don't remember and you blacked out. That's not gonna work anymore. We're not, we're not, we're not taking that no more. If you said something racist and you forgot about it or you were blacked out and you don't remember, it's already in your heart. So it was either gonna come out. And for me, I think to myself, while I was in that moment, and I'm the only black person in the room, and all these white folks are around me, and I'm saying to myself, is this what you want to say to me when you get mad? When you really get angry? Is that how you really feel? That, you know, when everything is cool, when Lee is cool, everything is fine and dandy. But as soon as you're angry with Lee, you really want to try to hit me below the belt and, and, and say things about the color of my skin and make racial slurs. And it just isn't right. It's not right. 
uh, in a work environment is not right in any environment. I want to give a huge shout out to Jimmy because the things that she was saying, the way she stood up, she said Camilla was so disrespectful. Black men have to go through enough in society and she doesn't have time for anybody who's racist. Goodbye, girl. Jimmy, when I look into this camera, and I want to tell you this from the bottom of my heart, me watching that and hearing those words come from you meant so much then and even more now. One thing that I do know is that you are a true ally and we need more out there like you. To, the, the first part of being an ally is being able to speak up and cut people off. Also, as I watch this, Brittany, you're another one who stepped up and said something. Uh, CT, you're another one who stood up and said something. But now that's 1000%, the way you articulated your interviews and spoke about everything that happened, I can't thank you guys enough. And Tony as well. There's, I'm sure everybody has something to say in their interviews and I can't thank you enough. So, as you're watching this, whoever's the higher up at MTV and you're looking at this footage, wouldn't that tell you to say, wait a minute, like, we got to get rid of this girl. We have to send her home. That's what I'm thinking as I see this. Like, she has to go. But let's keep watching and see what happens. So, it's the next morning as I'm watching here. And Bananas, Cara, and CT, and Jordan are all having a conversation about what went on. And I come inside the room. And once again, it's just me, right? It's just me. Big you know, black dude with, you know, his white coworkers. And they're all like, you know, saying, hey, bravo for what you did last night. And as I'm watching myself in the video, I'm so uncomfortable. But what I try to do is make a joke out of what's going on because I don't really want to offend the people that are sitting there. But why is that, Lee? Why, do you, why can't you really speak how you feel? What are you so afraid of? Like, say what's on your mind. You have the floor. And just looking at me back then, I could tell. It's kind of like when people laugh at their own pain. You kind of like want to soften the blow. You know, when things happen, black people try to make it seem like it's not that bad. It's okay. We go through this. Yeah, we go through this, but we shouldn't have to. At this very moment, Lee, you had the floor to say, I'm not putting up with this. And I didn't. And for years, this has been weighing on my conscience. For years, it's been weighing on my conscience. Like, damn, Lee, you dropped the ball. You had the time to say something. And I didn't. But I forgive you now. I forgive myself now for that. I forgive myself for being unaware. I forgive myself for being a pushover. I forgive myself for letting things slide. I forgive myself for choosing money. I forgive myself for choosing fear over what is right. Um, I don't know how much time I have left in this life, but from here on out, especially when it comes to racism, I'm 1,000, 1 million percent gonna stand up and have a voice and be loud about how I feel. That doesn't mean I have to be aggressive. That doesn't mean I have to be violent against somebody, but I'm gonna stand up for what's right. And I feel that anybody that's going through this in the workplace or at home or with family members or friends, step up and say something. Like, don't let money uh, overshadow what's right because you'll end up like how I've been for the past five, six years, beating yourself up over it. And now I want to talk about how I truly feel. And this is just me being honest and being vulnerable. Like, watching this really makes me sick. Parts of it, uh, makes me sad, parts of me is embarrassed of, of, of how I was, but I'm no longer gonna wear this weight on my shoulders because a lot of this was out of my control and I should have had some help. So let me continue to keep watching and see if help ever comes. So I'm now sitting in the living room and Camilla is coming into the house. She has no shoes on. She still has this, this look on her face. It's not a look like she's been crying. She looks angry. And I'm thinking to myself, that she's gonna be lying towards me and she's gonna be crying and she's gonna be apologizing about everything that happened last night. And no, she doesn't. She just walks into her room where there's Nelson and Hunter sitting here. And Hunter even has to leave out of the room because he's like, man, this feels so uncomfortable. And Nelson is like, he's out of here. So now we're about to prepare for deliberation. And the scene goes to where I'm in my room, where I share the room with Tony because Camilla and Tony won the challenge. 
and still she didn't come in the room to ask for me. She asked to speak to Tony, and I'm standing right there. You can see me. The same black guy who you were cursing out. It's, it's super obvious. I'm the only black man in the room, and you say nothing to me. And I'm just kind of mind blown. And I make a comment saying to Tony, I'm like, hey man, hold it down. And you know, trying to be funny. A, 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 another part of me trying to be funny and try to soften the blow to make everybody else in the room feel comfortable with what's going on. I need to be speaking up. At that point, I should have stopped her and said, hey, where you going? But you know what? I'm basically trying to figure out how this is all going to work out. So as she's having this conversation with Tony right now, she's basically asking, hey, what, you know, how this happened last night and, you know, what went on? And now she's saying that, you know, she's sorry for what she did. And, and, and the key thing that stuck out in this, Camilla says, I don't know why I'm the way I am. Is it how I was raised? That's exactly why you are the way you are. Because that's exactly how you were raised. That is taught. Racism is a taught behavior. No one comes out of their mother's womb and looks at the color of someone else's skin and say that they don't like that person. That's a learned behavior, whether you learn it from TV, whether you learn it from friends, or whether you learn it from your family. So you already said, Camilla, exactly why you are this way. And you know it. You know exactly why you're that way. But it's funny to hear her say that because she's basically giving you the answer of why she is the way she is. And she's in her interview saying that, you know, she doesn't like. Now, mind you guys, as she's talking to Tony, she's crying. She's sorry. So she says, when she walks into this deliberation room, we're all sitting in the living room. The look on her face, and I want you guys to go back and really watch it and dissect the episode I am. The look on her face is, is like someone did something to her. She's angry. And we're all just sitting there and we're quiet. So at this point, I'm like, cool. TJ's about to come in and TJ's going to bring up what happened last night. Because you got, as you guys know, anytime there's a, a massive blow up or some type of physical violence or something, TJ, the first order of business, he says, let's talk about what happened last night. So I'm like, cool. She's going to have this apology, but she's going home. And cool, MTV has my back. Like, you know, I, I know that no one really did nothing the night before, but at least this is to be the time when she goes home. The look on Camilla's face before TJ comes in, I want you guys to really look at that. She looks so pissed. And TJ walks through the door. Let's see what he says. Wow. TJ says, immediately out the first thing out of his mouth, as you know, Camilla and Tony won the challenge before so they get to vote. And I'm sticking to myself. I said, what the hell is going on? Like, no one is about to talk about what happened. And I'm just like, imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine everything I went through last night. And TJ comes in and he says nothing about it. Now, I want you guys to understand that TJ is an ally. TJ is somebody who I'm very close with. And him and I have had countless conversation about race in America, things that go on. Like, I genuinely love TJ. He's one of the best humans I've ever met in my life. But you guys must understand that TJ is doing a job and he's only saying what the producers tell him to say. Now, that's the crazy part. I have to step up and say, hey, Camilla, do you have anything to say about your actions last night? She doesn't step up and say anything. I do. Like, imagine how much I'm burning up inside knowing that. Not only am I pissed about what she said, but I'm also pissed that TJ, right? The producers didn't tell TJ to say something. I had to say something. I was the victim last night and I had to bring up why something happened to me and, and basically force somebody to apologize. Somebody who wasn't going to do it on their own. Mind blowing to me. It's just like, you might as well just spit in my face because this was the worst apology anybody's ever given me. This is the worst apology anybody has ever given me to the magnitude of the things she said to me yesterday. And everybody in the room, as I'm looking at Johnny's face, is just kind of like, this is just trash. And Johnny's in an interview right now, and he's saying there's no excuse for using that type of racial language, uh, Camilla. And, and the way Johnny stood up and spoke in his interview, that's what I'm talking about. That's how everyone should feel. MTV, that's how you should feel. That's how you should feel about the situation. And clearly you don't. And it's, it's really heartbreaking. Um, 
and sad and I've had a lot of time to like gather all my emotions together but to know that a network at this point where I've given at least seven to eight years of my life to everything um, you guys are just you guys are basically just recording you're not doing anything to help me nothing and yeah I don't know and Tony said he thinks that it's great that I brought it up no Tony it would have been great if the producers would have brought it up right and this is nothing like to get Tony I'm just going off of what he said because he's like it's good that I brought it up or whatever the case may be but I'm just saying like it, it would have been better if they had to say something not that I brought it up I shouldn't have to bring it up that's the, that's the thing. Why do black people always have to be the one who's beating the drum over, over what happens, right? The producers, the people that are higher up need to bring it up. She is so nasty. She is such a nasty person. And as I'm, this apology just making me sick looking at it. And anybody watching it, it should make you sick too. And it's not to bash her, but this is just the reality of the type of person she was. I don't know what she is now, but then she was a very nasty, bitter, angry, disgusting person. And the look on her face with that apology just kind of like blowing it off. It's like, damn, you just don't get it. And the tears, it's like, miss me, please, please. At this point, I just want to be over it. So I'm like, hey, I accept her apology. So with me saying that I accept her apology, MTV, was that a, that was enough for y'all? Y'all thought that like, okay, she said he, she was sorry, he said he accepts it, and you guys were like, okay, since he accepts it, then we accept it, because that's not how this should work. I I don't know what I was thinking right there, and, and, and Leroy, as I'm watching you, my brother, I don't know what you were thinking. I know that you were scared. I know that you were just like over it. You just wanted to be over. I just wanted it to be over. Like this is something that has been going on for hours. I wanted just to just to be over. And as I watched my last interview here, I said, I don't think that Camilla's racist. I don't think that she's prejudiced. My brother, you must be blind, Leroy. Leroy then if you didn't think this girl was racist. I want you guys to all look up the definition of racist and being prejudiced, and that would definitely be it. So, so, so for those who are watching, I wanted to like read out the definition for you, but I want you guys to look at this episode and then go look up the definition of, of racist and see is everything that happened to me that night considered someone to be racist. I think so. And me saying that. I feel like I was, I don't know why, Lee, like, like I'm trying to make everyone else feel comfortable about uh, what went on. When I was targeted, I was targeted because of the color of my skin, verbatim, pointed out, singled out, and, and had violence uh, uh, put on me. Like I was hit with that pillow violently. And she said she's sorry, I said I accept it. And the show goes on. And that's the end of the episode. So for the rest of the season, the rest of the time I spent there before I was eliminated, I didn't speak to her. I didn't want to have nothing to do with her. And I remember after everything that happened that night, a, the couple of the producers or the next morning, they asked me, and it's really always sticks out with me, they asked me if I wanted to see a therapist. And I say to myself, a therapist? No, I don't want to see a therapist. I've been black my whole life. At that point, I was... 30 something, you know, maybe 31 years old. I don't want to see no damn therapist. I want you guys to do something. I want you guys to stand up for me. The same person you call every season and I come run it. I want you guys to do something for me. Why are you guys not doing anything? I don't, I don't understand. And the fear that I had of speaking up, right? Because you guys have already shown me who you are by not saying nothing. If I would have beat the drum and said, yeah, I'm going home. You guys would have for sure talked me out of it and everything, you guys would just try to make everything seem like it was sweet. And that's not a, a company that loves you. That's not, and, and some of these producers and, and higher ups, I've known for years. I've known for years. They see me at, at, at my best and at my worst. And right now I'm at a vulnerable state and no one, and all you can do is ask me if I need to see a therapist. 
And so the season goes on. I go home. Camilla goes home. No apology. Not only is Camilla allowed to stay on the show, but she actually wins the show. Do you know how much that burned me up inside? The fact that this girl went on a whole racist rant and was violent towards me. You guys allow her to stay on the show, which is a privilege. It's a privilege to be on MTV. It's also a privilege for MTV to have us as cast members. So it kind of goes both ways. It's a privilege for me to come on your show. Believe that. It's a privilege to have me. To have someone like Leroy is definitely a privilege. But you allow this girl to stay on the show and she won. And she won all the money. So you basically rewarded her for being racist and being violent. That makes no sense. I've seen people get sent home for less. So what is it about her or what is it about me that made you not care about what happened to me? Because basically that's what you're telling me. And imagine having to go through a whole season, finish out the rest of the season, and lose and know that this girl is still there competing for the money. When I should have been there, she should have been gone. She wins, and then they have another show called Chef vs. Stars that was filmed the same summer, probably like a, a month later. They invited her to do Chef vs. Stars, so wait a minute, let's run it back. Racist rat, being violent, keeps her on the show, she wins the show. $450,000, then you invite her to do Chef vs. Stars. But there, she does the same exact thing. So as I said before, you guys could have stopped this from happening if you'd have stopped her from doing the show years ago because she was already showing signs of uh, being drunk and belligerent, violent. I'm reminded all the time about what happened to me on Dirty 30. And it's something that I can never get away from. Um, it's something that I've tried to block out of my mind for years. And I feel good being able to express myself. Um, it definitely sucks that the network didn't have my back. And that's that's something that I just have to live with. Even, even though a lot of this happened years ago, this is still trauma that I live with today. And speaking about this now actually makes me feel a lot better. Um, but then everything came rushing back once uh, some fans was sending me some DMs. They were like, hey, Leroy, did you know that MTV still follows Camilla on Instagram? I'm like, what? There's no way that, that MTV will be following her on Instagram. And in my mind, I'm like, ah, you know, it doesn't matter. And then I'm thinking to myself, that's you Lee being a, a pushover again. It does matter because when we think of Instagram, the people you, you follow, you support. So that should have been one of the first things that should have been done. So this happened years ago. And to know that the network is still following her on social media, makes me think like everything they've been saying thus far is just a bunch of BS. So then I, I looked and the person who sent me this said, Leroy, did you also know that MTV, MTV doesn't follow you? And I'm thinking to myself, what? And so as I look, MTV is definitely following Camilla on Instagram still, and MTV isn't following me. Now for myself, I can really care less whether they're following me, but it's, it's just, it really makes me uh, kind of angry and it also is disheartening to know that still this network is still supporting her and not supporting me. I feel as if the network needs to start holding cast members and anyone that they employ at the network accountable for their actions. If you show any signs of racism or you say anything that has to do with uh, the color of someone's skin or, or any type of discrimination or any type of racist gestures, you should never be allowed to be back on the show again. And you can't kick someone off the show and then try to bring them back in the future or try to sneak them on when the climate is kind of down and no one's thinking about it. So what I want the network to understand is that all eyes are gonna be on you with every move that you make now because you dropped the ball then.
I hope that anyone that has ever made a racist gesture or said a racial slur towards someone is never allowed to do the challenge again. I wouldn't like to see someone come back on the show after doing that. You know, I don't want to see someone have to take a break from the show for a couple seasons, then they're allowed to come back on. I don't think that that's right. So if MTV is trying to move forward um, and growing and evolving and righting their wrongs and becoming more of an ally, I think that that's a definite no, that you can't bring anybody back who has had that type of past. It's not right. It's not fair. And yeah, I just don't think that this should happen. So I'm going to be paying very close attention to the people that are casted. Uh, when it comes to things of that nature because that's definitely a huge trigger for me knowing that you would allow someone to come back on your show um, to compete after they've been uh, racist towards the cast member. Thank you guys so much for your time. MTV, you have my number, you have my email. I'm more than open to have a conversation with you on how we can make change happen. And the ball is in your court. All eyes are on you.